What is a null reference exception and how do you fix it? This exception is very common and it always indicates a bug in your own code. I'm going to quickly demo exactly what the exception means and show you how to track down and fix it when it occurs in your own applications. This is a simple console application that does not have nullable reference types enabled. I will talk about the nullable reference feature in a couple of minutes and how it can help you avoid null reference exceptions in the first place. The starting code is very simple. We create an instance of the example class and then we just take the to string, which will return by default the name of the class, and then convert it to uppercase. Now this code will work, so let's demonstrate that by running the code and seeing how it works correctly to start with. And there we go, it outputs the type and name correctly. Now let's introduce the problem that's going to cause a null reference exception. I'm going to change the right hand side so we no longer create an instance of the class and instead start with null. In this case when we try and call toString as a method on null this is going to cause an exception. You can't invoke a method or a property or a field on a null reference because there just is no reference to work against. Let's run this again and hopefully this time we'll see that the exception is thrown. And there we go, as expected, null reference exception. If we stop the program, we can see that this is a simple way of reproducing the bug. The technique to fix these bugs is what I call backtracking. In this case, it's a trivial example. We can see that the exception occurred on E, dereferencing E, and so we track back to say, well, okay, where did E come from? In this case, it's just the previous line and we can immediately see that it's null and that tells us the source of the issue. So let's create a slightly more complicated example that shows multiple steps in backtracking. Here is my new code. I've added an extra level of indirection. We can see here that we're creating an instance of example class. We're calling a helper method called today as string and then we take that returned string and output it in uppercase. The intention of our today as string is it checks the current day of the week and then it returns either is today a work day or a weekend. There's a bug in here. Let's see if we run this code if we trip over this bug. Here we go. Here's the exception. And now we are going to use the same technique we used previously to backtrack. So we can see here, if we hover over type of day, it's null. So we've been given a null, which explains the null reference exception. Let's go back one level by backtracking. Type of day came back from a function call. Okay, this means we need to go into that function, which is the source of the null, and debug. So now we're going to set a debug breakpoint, stop, and then run again. And this time we can debug into that method. So we backtracked another step. Here we are. I'm going to use F10 to step. Step again. Aha. Here's the source of the problem. We're returning null instead of a valid string. So this is an example of how you would backtrack into a function. And then in a real world example, maybe you backtrack two, three, four levels of function deep in order to eventually find where in your code you're returning a null instead of a proper value. In this case, the bug is very simple to fix. So let's go ahead and do that. We can see here that we've missed off one of the days. This should be a Friday. This now covers every day of the week. If we now run that application, we go to the terminal, press go, and sure enough, it's a work day. Hopefully this has shown you how to work with backtracking to dig down and keep going backwards and backwards and backwards in your application until you find the source of the problem. Once you know the source of the problem, it's usually fairly straightforward to fix. Starting with C sharp eight, reference nullable types as a feature were added. This particular project doesn't have it, but let me show you how you can add it. 
if you go into the csproj file we can add enable as the nullable property let's save that and if we go back to the program this new capability will highlight an error for us or a potential error you can see it's returning the yellow squiggly line for an error under null this is because reference types are now assumed to not be nullable unless you explicitly add the question mark after them if i add the question mark it gets rid of this bug because it knows that it is allowed to be nullable and again because this is returning a potentially nullable value we need to also indicate that this is potentially nullable so there you go a full description of reference nullable types is beyond the scope of this video. I recommend you go and look it up. It's a really useful feature and you should use it on all your new projects. Hopefully you found this useful. If so, hit the like button so that others can find the same answer. Until next time, keep on trucking.